Well, well, 5.45 p.m. and somehow I find myself on BCTV's rooftop studios once more, back for another edition of our weekly media roundup, 5.45 Live. On deck tonight, we're going to talk about the Flotilla protest. It's coming up tomorrow. That's right, it's been a year already. But uh, tonight we'll get some highlights from last year and break it down on the where's and when's for tomorrow. We're also going to get our Channel 10 report, which includes all the municipal happenings from this past week, summed up in a uh, slick new web feature. We'll uh, get the summary there, which includes the Brattleboro Hinsdale and I-91 bridges, as well as Brattleboro's new sidewalk project, new select board talks, uh, Nelson Withington skating rink, and more all in there. And we're also going to talk about a new League of Women Voters series right here in BCTV. And uh, of course, the Brattleboro Memorial Hospital $7.5 million upgrade, which drew the governor to town uh, for their opening. All that and more, we're going to do it in 15 minutes or less. That's right. Pack it all in, sum up a week's worth of clips. So if you've got the time here on this somewhat dreary Friday night, stick with us on 545 Live. Welcome back to a rainy August 9th, 2013 edition of 545 Live as we get ready for our live breakdown at week's end. Every Friday now we'll be broadcasting live here, taking 15 minutes out of the schedule to sum up a week's worth of web content posted uh, throughout uh, our busy schedule. As we go through the week, we'll be posting uh, a series of web clips online that will include uh, reports on municipal happenings, arts and performance, breaking news and the like. We'll look at other local media sources in there as well and we'll pull it all together into a master show right here uh, at the desk. Fridays, which you can also subsequently view online. All right, let's jump into the stories here. We'll start at Brattleboro Memorial Hospital, where their $7.5 million upgrade has just begun. And for that, uh, let's uh, switch the graphics around here. Well, Monday's ribbon cutting at Brattleboro Memorial Hospital drew the governor to town as BMH officially opened its doors on their new emergency room. The first phase to reach completion in the hospital's $7.5 million upgrade undertaking. For the lowdown on that story, the Brattleboro reformer's Howard Weiss Tisman not only has uh, the full tale featured in Tuesday's daily paper uh, and still available online at reformer.com, but he has video of it as well. Monday afternoon, Brattleboro Memorial Hospital celebrated the opening of its new $7.5 million renovation of its emergency department. The re renovation includes an entirely new entrance to the emergency room, a new lobby, and the cafe. That video, shown on tout.com, all part of uh, the Brattleboro Reformer's vastly expanded array of media now available, which includes a tout channel where the paper's reporters can upload multi-clip stories directly from the field as they report. All right, next up, hardly feels like a year has gone by since we took our 545 Live cameras out in the boat down the Connecticut River to uh, join members of various anti-Vermont Yankee affinity groups uh, to float down the river just offshore from the Vernon-based nuclear power plant to uh, protest the discharge of hot water into the Connecticut River. But it has in fact been a year, and tomorrow this protest will uh, get underway once more for uh, its second annual go. Uh, there'll be a gathering at the marina in Brattleboro and a boat launch in Hinsdale that starts around 11. They hope to uh, gather on the water outside the plant at noon and head from there to the opposite shore for a series of music speakers and the like. The rain date for it, should uh, the water continue to come down as it does now behind us, is this Sunday, just one day later at the same time. All the information, including how to rent a uh, non-motorized boat for the event, can be found at the Safe and Green Campaign's official website. In the meantime, let's take a look at some of the video from last year. Vermont Yankee has had opposition ever since it opened its doors in 1972. But it wasn't until late into its original 40-year license that protests took the center stage. In 2010, Entergy operated Vermont Yankee safely and met all safety cornerstone objectives. And with the announcement that a clean bill of health from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission would yield the plant a 20-year extension, DUI's adversaries have in turn pledged to extend their demonstrations another 20 years as well. Your conduct is in violation of Title 15, Vermont Statute 3705, all 
Now, as nerve-wracked legislators ponder the implications of dry cask storage, you think the plant shuts down, but then you've still got the waste to deal with, and it's not good stuff. Task forces brace for the economic blowback from the plant's eventual closure, and politicians examine the sincerity of the plant's out-of-state owners. Virginia Louisiana is good at convincing Vermonters of things that aren't true. Advocacy groups have turned their efforts to making public a lesser-known environmental component of the reactor system. The discharge of hot water, estimated by the state to peak at over 100 degrees Fahrenheit, released into the Connecticut River by the plant's extensive cooling system. That'll bring us to Saturday's event, perhaps one of the most photogenic yet, as objectors took to the river water in question by canoe, kayak, and pontoon to shake their oars at the plant's owners in the shadow of their waterfront property. With the state police marine patrol on hand, protesters kept just east of the buoy barriers out of Trouble's Way before gathering across the river where supporters on land had clustered around speakers, singers, and chanters to supplement the day's striking visual success. The underlying science in that permit doesn't give you the same answer as you get when you stick a thermometer in the river and track the actual temperature. As the afternoon came to an end, organizers concluded that the message had been sent, with the anonymity of the plant's hot water discharge properly dispensed, proving that sometimes to get what you want, you just have to roll up your sleeves and get your hands wet. Moving on, we'll launch into one of our web special features, also hosted by myself, released earlier this week. So it'll be kind of like uh, beaming it to myself on the field, like I have a twin, maybe an evil twin. Maybe I'm the evil twin. We'll never know. Anyway, our Channel 10 report includes a summing up of municipal coverage uh, throughout the week. That's right, BCTV has hundreds of hours of government coverage uh, on our government and education sister channel, Channel 10, uh, not just from meetings here in Brattleboro, but from our seven surrounding communities as well, including Vernon, Guilford, Demerston, Putney, Newfane, Townsend, and Jamaica, as well as the Leland and Gray School Board meetings on top of the Brattleboro Union High School and Brattleboro Town School District Board meetings, Planning Commission, DRB, you name it. There's so much municipal coverage. You could be as informed as anyone on this planet when it comes to the local inner workings of government, but it's hard to know where to start or where to stop. And that's where this Channel 10 report comes in. That's enough uh, spiel. I'll uh, let the handsome host uh, do the talk in here as we throw it to, well, to me. Take it away, Roland. This week's Channel 10 report uh, starts uh, right here in this fair town where a wealth of construction plans are the story this summer. With the much debated I-91 bridge rebuild taking center stage, it's easy to forget about the Brattleboro Hinsdale bridges which, after being dubbed structurally obsolete, but not unsafe, have prompted designers to approve plans for a new single-span bridge, something that received mixed reviews at an open forum last week hosted by VTrans, the New Hampshire Department of Transportation, and the Federal Highway Administration. Uh, an open forum that just so happens to be uh, where we'll start the clips off today. We looked at rehabbing the bridges on the existing alignment, replacing the bridges, on the existing alignment, and then six other alternatives of various different geometry and tweaking of the bridges to come up with the preferred alternative, which is a single span bridge just slightly south of uh, the existing bridges. Moving on, for those of you wondering where last night's Brattleboro Select Board is uh, in the clip, we have not forgotten it. We'll have not one, but two specials extending from last night's BCTV coverage, starting with interim town manager Patrick Moreland's debut meeting. And while Moreland has spent uh, more than a few Tuesday nights in attendance during his time as assistant to departing town manager Barb Sondag, he did take the opportunity last night to say a few words. I think identifying the sorts of jobs that are gonna be used, we're gonna be hiring. And identifying what's out there, Maybe a bit of history would be appropriate. You know, we obviously have the Farmland Preservation Committee that's set up um, with the ex intent, the charter that's been given us um, on the committee, when farmland becomes available or to purchase the development rights of farmland that um, may be available, whether the land is for sale or not. 
And with that, we've moved out of Brattleboro now into one of BCTV's seven surrounding towns, this time heading south to Vernon, where uh, that pitch you just heard to the Assembly of Monday Special Town Meeting from Farmland Protection Committee Chair Art Miller uh, to use 100 grand of the committee's funds to purchase the development rights to uh, Vernon resident Annette Royden's 58-acre property fell short as the town residents voted 45 to 24 not to make the deal. Closing in on the end of our pilot edition of our uh, BCTV Channel 10 report. More meetings this week include Monday's regularly scheduled select board meeting in Townsend. We've also got a Demerston meeting from Wednesday night. It's got two camera coverage. It'll show uh, later this week on BCTV Channel 10 as well. All these meetings can be viewed in their entirety, so you can get the full story, the full picture at brattleborotv.org. Moving on, we've all purchased an item or two on the World Wide Web at some point. You can buy movies, DVDs, even groceries and pharmacy items online. And healthcare is soon to join those ranks. As Vermont is slated to release its healthcare exchange this coming January 1, 2014. But residents of the Green Mountain State will get a chance to view their options and uh, go online shopping as early as October, as the website will go up in advance. So both businesses and individuals can scout their options. It's with that in mind that representatives from Vermont Health Connect, the project's managers, are touring the state to host open forums and answer questions. Open forums BCTV has been privy to and posted on our website. Uh, they did meet most recently last night at the Brattleboro Museum and Arts Center for a forum geared directly at individuals purchasing health care to partner with a previous forum in Putney geared towards businesses. All this information uh, can be found by looking up the Healthcare Exchange in Vermont Health Connect online or by watching these forums at brattleborotv.org. As uh, they point out, the philosophy is changing. There are different reasons why employers provide coverage to their employees. Um, historically, one of the reasons is because it's much more affordable to get it through an employer than to go out on your own. With the Affordable Care Act and with Vermont Health Connect, that's different. Well, where is the time gone? Feels like we just began this 545 Live edition, but uh, time to sum it up already. But first, uh, our brief look at our new on BCTV feature with the split screens and everything. We'll talk briefly about the new League of Women Voters series from uh, the Southeastern Unit moderator extraordinaire Janet Kramer who had joined us in our downtown studios to host a, a pilot edition of a new series aimed at helping local residents make tough decisions when it comes to everyday life choices. They had Blue Cross Blue Shield representatives on hand uh, to talk a little bit about some of the healthcare issues coming up. As we just mentioned, we've got uh, the clip here. Let's take a listen in. We looked at the delivery and the policy around healthcare in the first two years. And in the second two years, looked at health care financing and administration. Find it uh, for the rest of this week on BCTV Channel 8 and at brattleborotv.org and look for new episodes uh, in the months to come here at BCTV. Well, that does it for this week's end edition of 545 Live. Friday here as we sum up a week's worth of content. But remember, we'll be back one week from today right here on Channel 8 at 545 p.m. where we will uh, again sit down here at the desk at our rooftop studios, take another 15 minutes to pull together all the week's content. But that doesn't mean you won't see me, hear from me, hear from BCTV or 545 Live for a week. In fact, we'll be posting all week long with short one to four minute videos uh, on BCTV's YouTube channel, youtube.com slash TV, all in one word. Uh, we'll be putting up clips like that Channel 10 report, summing up municipal coverage, arts and performances, a calendar uh, feature, and plenty more. So be sure to uh, stay tuned. Any breaking news will hit there first as well. And then we'll pull it all together into a master edition special next and every Friday after that as well. All right. That's enough chit chat. My mouth is going dry here and I'm starting to think that if I talk any faster, my lips will come loose. So I'll leave it at that. Let you enjoy this uh, somewhat rainy weekend. Still plenty of happenings this weekend. So feel free to get out there and enjoy all the various events going on around town. You can get all the details on that at the master calendar at ibrattlebrew.com. And of course that flotilla protest will yield some footage that we'll post online Monday. So be sure to check in uh, then as well on youtube.com slash TV. In the meantime, stay safe out there. I'm Roland Boyden. Night, everybody. I'm glad you're glad. I'm glad. Oh, I am glad. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Uh -oh. And this is our singing portion of this the show. This is the singing portion of the show.